Welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue working on our 1993 Mustang GT convertible. The painting gnome got everything painted up for us, so we're out of excuses. We're going to have to put it back together. I hope I remember how. So let's figure it out. First, we'll start with the spaghetti challenge. Get it out of the way. I think I remember where these go, or at least the general area. I know that goes out there. And I know that straight part goes along the frame rail. So we'll get those in the place and figure everything else out from there. Kind of set it where I think it goes and then start clipping it in. We'll feed our headlight harness out here. And this is about where this goes. Then we can feed the wire through for our brake fluid level sensor. It goes underneath the master cylinder reservoir. And plug that in. And we know our coil goes over here. In one of these holes. And then we'll bolt it in. We can't get our impact in here for this bolt because our Brake lines are in the way, so we'll just use our ratchet and wrench and tighten that up the rest of the way. Now that all of our bolts are in there, we can tighten up the first two. Then we can bolt our starter solenoid to the apron. Make sure it's on there. And bolt our ground wire on. Now we're on to the spaghetti challenge on the passenger side. This one's a little easier. We got our vapor line for our vapor canister. So there's nothing hiding back there. And we'll put our little vacuum ball on. It's got a Christmas tree up in the front. That's old and doesn't want to work like it's supposed to. And then one bolt back. And then we'll hook our vacuum line to it. And we can bolt our relays into our apron. Now we're going to run a tap through our threads for the mounts for our air box. The four cylinder air box has the mounts down below, so these threads have never been used and they're a little rusty. And since our studs are mounted in little rubber grommets, they're not going to fare well to going through rusty threads. So we're just going to clean them up. We'll run the tap in there, run it back out. That'll take out any paint that's in there and any rust that's built up over the years. We'll screw our little studs in there. Then we'll clip some vice grips on the back side and tighten them up the rest of the way. That way we're not putting any stress on the little rubber parts. There is a flat spot on the back of those studs. That's what I'm grabbing onto so it's not messing up the threads. We can fish our lighting harness through on this side. And clip it into the course port. And put our little ground screw in. Tighten it down. And dead. And not dead. So we have our old airbag sensor and the indicators say that it's no good. In the pile. A lot of people ask how you know if airbag sensors can be reused and when there's holes punched in them, they're generally not any good. And Ford was nice enough to put the adjustment screws for the headlights right in front of these airbag sensors. So when they get pushed back, they poke holes in the case. And even if they're good, don't set any lights off or anything, uh, water's gonna get in there and pretty soon they're going to be garbage. So we just used our used ones. We can throw a prop rod in there. Got a tab in the back, slide that in. 
and then one bolt that holds it down. We can mount our center airbag sensor. This is also a used one. Our original, the wire was ripped out of the back of it. They only felt they needed three bolts on this one. Plug the harness in. Turn it all the way down to the other side. You have to weave it in around the other harness. And then we can plug it in. We'll put our little J-clip on the bottom of our radiator support. Our AC condenser bracket. Another J-clip on the bottom. That's for our power steering cooler. And then we can run our power steering cooler in there. Bolt in our cooler. And we need to adjust a little bit. It's a little bent. We can bolt our horns on. Use the original horns. And plug them in. I used everything original if I could, and if it was damaged or bad, I replaced it with our used parts. So, this is another used airbag sensor. All three of them ended up being bad on this one. So I'm glad I got that parts car. We run our harness up our apron and plug it in. We can clip our little brackets into our bumper shocks. These have the nuts on the back side that the bolts will go into. We just had them off so that we could paint the bumper brackets. These don't get painted. They just snap in there, put our reinforcement up there, and then we'll start the bolts. The passenger side, the bolt holes are round, the driver's side they're slotted a little bit, so they give you a little bit of room. Now that we have all our bolts started, we can go ahead and tighten them all down. Manufacturer specs, of course. My impact identifies as a torque wrench. I actually only bolted that reinforcement on so I have a good place to push from. Now we're going to go ahead and throw our option tag and our radiator support. Ford just staples it on here. Unfortunately, my swing line wouldn't quite get through the metal. Is this your stapler? Yeah. Can we show you how to use it? No. <laughs> so we just use Ford's old staple, put it back through the holes, and then we'll tap it in with a hammer. And if it's not tight, we'll bend the ends of the staple over on the other side. Make sure it stays in there. I made a little trip over to Scott's Tool Emporium, aka Scott's Work Toolbox, and picked up a tap so we could tap out our exhaust manifold so we could put our new studs in here that are a little bit larger, so hopefully they don't end up broken like our old ones. So we start our tap. Once it's in there, give it a little shot of oil and run it the rest of the way in. We're going to do that on all of our studs so that we can them right in. We already tapped these out. So we have our two nuts on there. We're going to jam them together so that we have something to turn against. Which we got to tighten them together. And then we can tighten them up. Click, click, always good to double check your torque settings. That's how to figure out how to put the wrenches on here. We'll unjam our jam nuts and spin them off of that. We're going to need them so we can put them on our other stud. We're going to do the same thing and run that in there. Since the studs are long enough that they protrude through the manifold, I'm going to put that nut in the back side and use it as a jam nut. Because there's nothing worse than when you're trying to pull the nuts off of the studs later on and the studs unscrew from the manifold. So we're going to lock them in there so we don't have that problem. Of course, about six minutes worth of rust is all you need to make sure they're locked in there nice and tight. 
Now we raised our adjustable engine stand to a comfortable working height. We're going to change the oil. And the reason we have it at the site is a couple different reasons. Uh, one, it's easier to work at this level. Two, we can fit our drain pan underneath it. And three, the safety experts are losing their minds. That's the most important one. So we'll screw our drain plug back in here. Tighten it down to manufacturer specs. We're not gonna go Jiffy Lube specs because it's not in the car and we don't have the required leverage to get that 6,000 foot pounds. And now we're gonna go over and we're gonna pull the other drain plug out because Ford. Drain out this half a quart of oil. When that's done, let's throw our plug back in. And tighten that down. This one looks slightly less used. I'd be willing to bet that a lot of people forgot about that one. So now we can start unbolting our oil pan. There's four bolts on the corners that are a different size, and there's one stud up in the front on the driver's side. Other than that, all the bolts are the same. One last bolt. And our oil pan should be off. I did disconnect the oil level sensor when you guys weren't looking. So the inside of our engine is pretty clean. Whoever the previous owners were took care of this thing. Got the oil changed regularly. And we can see where our oil leak was coming from. It's where the gasket goes around the rear main. There was actually a tear near the bolt hole up there. Sprung for the Ford Performance. Made in China. So to all the Ford fans that love to insult GM like I care because all their parts are made in China, I got a bad news for you. Ford parts are made in China too. Everything's made in China. So we're going to throw a little RTV silicone where the block meets the timing cover and then we can stick our gasket up here. There's tabs on the corner of the gaskets where they meet the main caps. So we're going to tuck those in there, they're little notches. And if you don't tuck them in there, they won't go in by themselves, and then you end up having a leak. And if you get the little tabs tucked in there, it holds the gasket up into place. This would be a lot easier if the engine was upside down, but my engine stand doesn't go upside down, so we're going to deal with it. Since I went with the Ford Performance oil pan gasket, we did gain about 30 horsepower. I'll throw a few stickers on this car and we should be putting out about 50 horsepower. We got our gasket in there and we can put our oil pan up. Put our little stiffeners on there. We'll put our bolts in the four corners. And we can relax a little bit. Then we'll run everything up there with our impact that identifies as a torque wrench. Okay experts, here's your chance to run down to the comments and tell me how I should have tightened that down with a torque wrench instead of an impact, because I'm going to way over torque those. I'm going to use this special ratchet that beeps every once in a while. I don't know, I just stopped turning it when it beeps. So, it turns out that I had to turn it every time to make it beep. So maybe I didn't over torque those with the impact. Maybe I just found a quicker way to do it because I'm not just making content for YouTube and time is money. So now you guys have to go delete your comment that you so hastily typed. And our engine is ready to go back in. So our engine stand becomes our engine hoist. And we're going to lower it down in there. And highly caffeinated Scott's going to take over because it took a little while. We have to get the engine mounts lined up. We have to get the trans lined up with the back of the engine and because it's a Ford, we needed the torque converter lined up with the flex plate. Those little studs in the torque converter, yeah, they kind of really suck now. This would be a lot easier with two people, but I don't have any friends, so I had to do it by myself. 
Everything has to be at just the right angle in order for it to work. And when we got it all in place, we're going to check and make sure we don't have any wires pinched anywhere. Make sure our studs are in for our engine mounts. Make sure our studs for our torque converter are in. And we're ready to start bolting it up. Before we lifted it up, I was able to reach in from the top and get all of our bell housing bolts in, at least a couple threads, so we could just tighten them up from down here. Because trying to get them in from down here on the end of our extension and swivel socket is a little bit more difficult. Now we're gonna pull our transmission cross member mount bolts out. So we can drop the back of our transmission down and we can be able to get our extension in there and tighten up our bell housing bolts. bolts are out, so now we can lower our stand down. Lower it down that extra quarter of an inch. We got room for my little mitts. Figure out the secret to getting rid of these bolts. And I think we found the path. We'll tighten them down. And hope I'm not the next guy that has to take this out. And we'll try and get it all back. And of course, the socket doesn't come with. But at least it came out. Tighten up another one on this side. I like to go side to side just to make sure we aren't cocking anything in there. It's going in evenly. It is sitting on the little studs, the dowel pins in the back of the engine. It lines it up with the train. And of course we lost our socket again. Back over to this side. And one last one over here. And the hard part is done. And we can lift our engine and trans back up. And of course the bolt holes don't line up. So you raise it up just enough to start the bolt on the one side. Then they keep going and it goes through the other side. We'll go to the driver's side and do the same thing. On this side, it will go down a little bit. Tighten everything up. I'm fairly confident that our transmission is going to stay in there, so we'll take the stand out of here. So far, so good. Now we can bolt our torque converter in. I did push it back into the trans, so now we got to kind of wiggle it around and work it forward at the same time. We don't want to just send it. We'll end up binding it up in there sideways. We'll just kind of walk it forward. Tighten it up. I do have a ratchet on the crank so I can spin the engine over. So we're going to spin it around so we can see our next stud. And it looks like I overshot that one. Start our nut on there. And we can't quite get a good bite on there. So before we round that off, we're going to back our engine up a little bit. And then we can tighten it up the rest of the way. Click. Spin it around to the next one. And I believe we overshot this one as well. And you can see the drain plug and the torque converter. And that one little slot in the flex plate. You can actually drain the torque converter on these when you do a transmission fluid change.
We'll back up our engine a little bit because I did indeed overshoot that. And tighten it down the rest of the way. One more. Spin it around and see if we can manage not to overshoot this one. And we did, by the worst yet. We'll just back it up. At least I'm consistent. Click. We have to bolt our trans cooler lines back up to our engine before I forget. And it's really hard to get to those once the starter's in there. Now we can slide our torque converter inspection cover back up there. It slides into the piece that's sandwiched in between the engine and trans, the rest of the cover. And then it's held in the bottom by three bolts, two different kinds, because Ford. All of our bolts started first, and we can tighten them down. And we'll use a ratcheting wrench on this one because I was too lazy to go get a shallow socket. Even though I'm pretty sure the walk to get the socket was less work than ratcheting this. Click. Now we can throw our starter up here. I always like to start with a positive cable. That way if you accidentally drop it, you don't end up ripping the smaller gauge wire out. Or if you drop your socket or got to go get a socket, you could just let it hang on that wire. Or if you really want to instigate the experts in the comments, you could just let it hang on that wire just for fun. That's what I do. Now we're going to tighten down that stud with our electric ratchet. Because I'm not done instigating the experts. Let me put our smaller wire around here. We're also going to tighten that down with an electric ratchet. We haven't broken any studs yet. And I think we're ready to stuff our starter up there. Oh, not quite. Got to plug in our O2 sensor. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to get to that. At least, not without a struggle. Figure out how this goes up there. The cables want to push it back where it belongs, so you got to kind of force them up there. And then it'll slide back into the trans like it belongs. Then we can start putting our bolts in. We've got to pull our extension out of here because with the swivel on there, it's like trying to tighten the bolt up with a wet noodle. Now we can head up and tighten our engine mounts down. It would be a lot easier if I felt like turning on the compressors and using the impact, but I don't want to listen to them. So we're just going to do it the hard way, by hand. All of our little caps off of our fuel lines. Both ends. And we're ready to reconnect them. We just push in. Just give them a little twist to make sure they're in there. We can put our little safety clips on. If they haven't been lost over the years. We'll head over to the other side and tighten up this engine mount. No fuel lines on this side. Everything's done on the bottom, so we can head up top and hook up our cables, 
our cruise control cable, our throttle cable, and our trans kickdown cable. Don't ask me which is which, I forgot. Both in our first one. We're going to reroute this one because it was not where it belonged. It had a weird angle to it. So now it's going straight in like it should. Put our bolt in that one. Try not to lose it. It was really trying for a vacation in Narnia. I wasn't having it. We can clip it into our throttle body. And the second cable clips onto the first one. Test it and make sure it's staying in there. This cable doesn't have any bolts in it. Slides in, and then twists and locks into place. And this one just has a little clip that holds it in, and somehow we managed not to lose it. We'll clip that back in. Put our trans dipstick back in there. Then we'll hook up our vacuum line. And tighten up our clamp. Once upon a time that used to have a spring clamp on it, but I don't like spring clamps and somebody had already replaced it, so there you go. We're gonna find our ground strap that's Hopefully not stuck between the engine and trans. And we lucked out. We bolt that to the firewall. And tighten it down. Give it the wiggle test, make sure it's not going anywhere. Then we can plug in our alternator. Use a little too much force on that plug and cause the lift to drop. We can plug in our coil wire. That's a separate harness that runs all the way under the intake. We just slid it back under the intake. And now we can bolt our positive cable back into our starter solenoid. Bolt our ground wire in. Our ratchet's headed for Narnia. Plug our ground lead in. And I think there's another end of this plug. These look like they go together. They do now. Flip our coil wire on. And move it over here so it's not in the way of the dipstick. We can clip our salt and pepper shaker connectors in, complete with no broken tabs. And there goes that awesome lift again. And I think I got everything else, at least that's important. Tighten up our power steering pressure line. Not sure why I decided to hold it where I wanted it to go because it moves once you tighten it up. It doesn't lock into place. Slide up our return line. And move the spring clamp up.
and pull our cap off of here. It was already off, just sitting on there. Now we can fill up our power steering fluid. Oh, look at that. Mr. Spotty showed up. Too bad he's going to be off for a workman's comp claim. He got his face stuck between the chain and the intake manifold. I have run out of patience and I want to know if this thing is going to start. So instead of putting a battery in and hooking everything up, which requires a battery tray and all that other nonsense, we're just going to hook a jumper pack to it and give it a try. And before you ask, yes, I did put oil in it. I think. That's a good sign. All right, place your bets.